story they'd like to hear. Toto and Maya put their heads together and came up with Marguerite Henry's Bridie of the Grand Canyon. He kind of resembles Bridie. So here's a little bit about Bridie. This is a story of a little lone burrow who lived in the Grand Canyon in Arizona. An old prospector found him running wild along bright angel creek that tumbled down the north wall of the canyon into the Colorado River. The prospector roped and gentled him, but then he gave him his freedom. Instead of hobbles or pickets, he held on to him by the invisible cord of friendship. Black Jack shared in small talk around the campfire and a warm hand scratching the itchy places on his back, just like Toto was demonstrating. In return, the burrow carried the prospector's pick and pan and even packed water for him. The rest of the time, he was on his own. He was free to browse or to splash in the creek or just to sit dog fashion dozing in the sun. After the prospector died, Bridie became a wild spirit again. He migrated like a bird. In winter, all alone, he roamed the warm inner reaches of the canyon where snow never falls. But in summer, he hightailed it to the rim to live in the cool mountain meadows of the Kaibab Forest. Soon, men began using the trail he made, explorers and rangers, artists and tourists. Bridie greeted them with hearty braise, took potluck with them, and enjoyed their company. That is, until they tried to hobble him. Then he went bounding off, hee-hawing at their foolishness. But in spite of this, or be perhaps because of it, men loved him, respected him, and envied him. He became their symbol of a joyous way of life. To Bridie, then my gratefulness for luring me to the Grand Canyon. May his wild, free spirit forever call men to his haunts. And on still summer nights, may they hear, as I did, his faraway voice singing to the moon. Chapter one. A shaggy young burrow lay asleep in the gray dust of the canyon trail. Except for the slow heaving of his sides and an occasional flick of an ear, he seemed part of the dust in the ageless limestone that rose in great towering battlements behind him. The sun had been shining fiercely on his belly and now began climbing up over his sides, then slowly up the canyon wall. But for a long time, the rocks held their heat and the solitary figure dozed on. A ground squirrel peered out from a chink in the wall, watching a moment with friendly eyes, then dived back where it came from. A cottontail rabbit played hop, skip, and jump around him but nothing disturbed the little gray lump, not even a nuthatch hammering away at a juniper tree. It was the wind, an uprising current of wind from the depths of the canyon that finally roused him. It whirled up his nose and down his ears, tickling him awake. With a grunting sigh, he began rolling, and with each turn just missed falling off his sledge into Bright Angel Creek, hundreds of feet below. Now he sat up on his haunches, Scraping his back against the rough, warm limestone, he gave a luxurious yawn and gazed at the opposite wall as if in search of some creatures like himself. But there was only rock rising sheer and lonely to the sky. He stretched his forelegs and then he was up, shaking the dust from his coat. Over the ledge, a few spears of branch grass grew in a crevice. He leaned out into space and cropped them jaws swinging sideways as he chewed, while his eyes, from under their thatched roof of hair, looked out over his world. It was a world of rock, piled up and up, layer upon layer to the sky, and down and down to the Colorado River far below. 
slowly, as if balancing the weight of his great ears, the little fellow swung his head around to follow the winding river, his eyes suddenly fixed on a tiny white spot. And at sight of it, he opened his wide jaw, swelled out his nostrils, and began braying, Instantly, the canyon took up the cry, south wall to north wall and back again. It banged and bounced the bray until there was nothing left of it. The burrow waited, listening. His ears probed the white spot as if to pull something out of it. There it was, an answering sound, a bellowing, hello, almost as big and brassy as his own. It set the little burrow into action. Down the trail he plunged, zigzagging from ledge to ledge, ears flopping, tail swinging, hooves toe dancing the narrow path. Once on his way, he found a kind of momentum took hold of him and he fairly flew, rounding one cliff only to face another. Time and again he crossed Bright Angel Creek, a foaming mountain stream that tumbled down to the river. For yards and yards he walked in its bed, picking his way around the glossy boulders but he neither drank nor played in the water. Only once did he stop to study his goal. The white spot had grown to a tent, and nearby campfire smoke was curling upward. Satisfied, he plunged on again, always traveling within sight and sound of the busy creek. The afternoon was late. The purple shadows were spilling down the canyon walls when he came at last upon the source of the smoke. An old, old prospector with flowing white hair was piling driftwood on a fire, and beside the fire stood an iron skillet and a bowl of yellow batter. <laughs>